Hello, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on 90 day certificate rotation. Uh, and here we're going to talk about the certificate rotation, what it is and how it affects you and how to address the problem. So first, let's start with what is it? So Google released a memo a few months ago announcing that they're going to reduce the uh, accepted lifetime cert of certificates from one of over one year to 90 days. You might be thinking, why Google? How do they control this? Well, they own Chrome, which is 80% of the internet. So um, they can do this. They did the same for certificate transparency logs. And in this memo, it also mentions uh, root certificate, root CAs being reduced to seven years and subordinate CAs being reduced to three years. This shouldn't really affect you unless you are um, pinning cert uh, certificates to a certificate uh, to a root or something like that we recommend to stop doing that and actually start doing it based on the subject name of the ca um so why are they doing this is it because google hates you and they just want you to work more and deal more with certificates uh no the reason for this is because of crypto agility so basically uh with uh quantum computers coming up RSA is going to be broken. All the kind of cryptographic algorithms will eventually be broken and they want to be ready. They want to be able to just say, hey, we no longer support RSA 2K. You have to use 4K and boom, everybody does it. So there is no that manual process. For example, right now it's going to take a year to go from one year to 90 days. They wanted to be able to do it quicker. And that's also good because it uh, forces organizations to automate stuff. So before you had to, um, give me one second. Before you had to manually rotate certificates and that causes issues. So if we see even the last week, Microsoft had two certificate outages caused by human error and 80% of companies have a certificate outage every year because of human error. So forcing automation will actually help companies do become better and there's no way to force it other than to make it very inconvenient and make it that you have to rotate them very quickly and that really adds up so there is actually studies of how much it costs to rotate a certificate and companies end up spending hundreds of thousands of dollars rotating certificates on wasted engineering time so by making it shorter it'll actually force people to automate it and there's tools out there to do that so let's talk about your game plan. So this is kind of like what it means to you, what do you have to do, and how do you start? So first thing is discover all your certificates. So uh, if you have a handful of websites or a handful of certificates, pretty straightforward. Just go inventory all of them, make sure that they're automatically rotated, and you're good to go. Um, the second one is set best practice for your organization. So if you have multiple engineering teams, a lot of organizations have seen that they actually just kind of like throw it in and uh, say like, hey, just go create your certificate. We are with DigiCert, go there and figure it out. If you actually set best practices, it actually makes it easier because users don't have to go and figure it out. They'll just follow your best practices. If you just say, hey, here are the five steps you do to set up a certificate properly, and you never have to touch it again. So if you can set up those best practices for the different environments where your certificates are, you'll make your engineering life easier. And also you'll make sure that everybody's just following best practices. And those best practices should have automating your certificate rotation. So every single certificate you create should be automated. Um, Every single tool probably has a way to automate it. And we're here to help if you have any questions with any specifics. Um, so let's talk about it. Should you be scared? How do you automate it? This sounds like a lot of work. So like if we go back here, it sounds like a lot of work, a lot of planning, but actually it is not as scary as it sounds. So there's multiple ways you could automate your SSL certificates. And actually, most of them are free. So there is no massive tool you have to purchase to actually start doing this. So first one is Acme. So Acme was created by Let's Encrypt, and it's an open source that it's basically an easy way to rotate certificates. And here I'm just going to pull in a diagram 
that kind of helps me explain it better. So basically, you have your web server. It actually goes and requests uh, the a certificate. Says like, hey, I want a certificate. The CA says prove that you actually own that domain. So like, let's say prove that you own docs.ketos.io. How do you prove that? Put this specific key on a specific path. So like, let's say docs.ketos.io slash seven C S F zero blah blah blah. They put it there. The CA goes checks. Oh yeah, you own that domain, so you should have a certificate. Um, this uh, once again sounds a little complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward to set up. So if you're actually just setting up an Acme, most most uh, web servers actually support Acme. So you just say, hey, this is my Acme server. Like let's encrypt, uh, point there, and try to go go get a certificate from there. So basically you you go you get a certificate from there and and sorry i'm just admitting people as they come in um you go you get the certificate and it'll automatically rotate so that's acme and i want to address a uh, kind of like uh mrs communication that there's out there, like a misconception that there's out there that Acme is not as secure because it's using DNS validation. Actually, DNS validation is the most secure way to validate because you can validate that they actually own the server. So uh, that's actually a pretty secure way to do it. And I've had companies that say like, oh, no, we only use EB certificates because we want them to verify our enterprise and make sure that we are legit and all that stuff. However, you're not blocking people from using Acme and using Let's Encrypt. So you might be using your EV certificates and all this stuff, but if an attacker finds a dangling DNS, which is a massive problem in the world now with cloud computing, we actually find around 15,000 dangling DNS every month uh, with our tool Easy Monitor, they can still go and create a certificate. There's nothing stopping them, unless you have a CAA record that we already have covered that. Uh, if you have any questions, it's in our uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if you're watching the recording, I'll link the YouTube channel uh, video down below so you can see it. Um, but yeah, basically CAA records is the only way that you could block it. And it's a good practice to have that CAA record that you only issue certificates from the CAs you trust and that you usually work with. And that goes back to the best practices. If you're setting the best practices and you say, hey, always go to this CA, then you can lock it down. The next one is another free option, or mostly free, is managed certificates by cloud providers. So cloud providers try to make it as easy as possible to host in their cloud. So Azure, AWS, GCP, all, all of them have automatic certificate rotation in their web applications. So like, for example, if you're using an Azure web application, there's an automatic certificate rotation that you can use there you don't really have to like care anything about the certificate. It'll magically get a certificate. It'll magically get renewed. And um, basically, you're good to go. So if you start leveraging those technologies, so your cloud technology, Acme for whatever you can, you'll it'll probably get you 90% of the way there. And honestly, to a lot of organizations, it'll get them 100% of the way there. However, there's some other nuances that there might be an old server or something like that that requires um, a little more work, and that's where EasyCA comes in. So we are actually uh, doing EasyCA public CA management, bringing all the certificate management that we have done for private certificates for organizations around the world. We're bringing that to uh, public CAs as well. Uh, you get the management domain ownership. We're actually doing a really cool thing with uh, Easy Monitor that you bring in, that we find all the domains with Easy Monitor, and then you bring the ownership, assign it to the people that own it, and they they automatically rotate them and so on. Um, and the coolest part about this feature, and probably my favorite part about it, it's free. So if you already have a premium or higher subscription with Easy CA, this comes for free. Um, we're here to help people get to those 90 days. Uh, we're not going to charge extra for helping you manage those certificates. So basically, we'll connect to your existing PKI. So let's say you're using Global Sign, DigiCert. Um, we'll connect to them. You deal with them, how much you pay them, and all that stuff. You just give us an API key, and we'll start managing the domain ownership, give you full visibility into your certificates, and kind of use it the same as you're using for private and public certificates, which also brings up a really good point. 
this requirement, this 90 day requirement, it's only for public certificates. So if you have your internal CA and you're issuing one year certificates there, you technically don't have to move to 90 day certificates. However, if Google is recommending it, and I also personally recommend it, it's good practice. So you might as well move everything to 90 days and automate everything. The reason for that, at the end of the day, you end up saving money by automating everything and having your engineers work on something else. So uh, that's kind of uh, where EasyCA comes in and helps you out automate either your private and public uh, certificates. So other than that, I want to open it up for questions. So if you have any questions, now is the time to type it on in the Q&A part or the chat, and I'll be happy to answer them. 